Chapter Five: The Beginning of a Legend. For three hours they rode the countryside, enjoying the lush green of the rolling hills. Have you ever noticed that Archenland is all hills and valleys, while Narnia is flat? Lana asked. Yes, I did notice that on the one occasion I visited Kerparvel. I wonder why, she mused aloud. Olvin glanced sideways at her. A grin threatened to appear on his face, but he fought it back and tried to pretend indifference. In an offhand manner, he said, uh, And I thought I was the dreamer who contemplated nonsense. Lana gave him a puzzled look before realization dawned on her. I am not thinking nonsense. Olvin threw back his head and laughed at her. Of course not, my dear sister. She would have reached over and hit him, but he pulled his horse to a stop. There is the winding arrow. The desert is beyond that. We should stop by the river and fill up on water, Lana suggested sensibly. We might be out in the desert a long time. You are right. We will stop by the river and have a picnic before pressing on. He looked around, wondering if they could pick berries or something. He should have thought of packing some food. A picnic? Lana asked incredulously. We are on the brink of a battle, and all you can think of is having a picnic? Olven shrugged, not looking bothered by her outburst. We have to eat. It wouldn't do to faint dead away from hunger before the giant even appears. Besides, it's such a lovely day, and we shouldn't let it go to waste. Lana just shook her head at her brother. Some things would never change with him. Very well. We shall water the horses and eat a morsel, but do hurry. I would not want to be caught by the giant while eating. At the river, they alighted from their horses with ease and grace that only comes from having dismounted from horses for a long time. Olven led Destiny and the gelding to the river and let them drink their fill. He and Lana took some water for themselves as well. Olven was pleased to find Lana had packed food for them in her saddlebag. I thought you couldn't think of food at a time like this, Olven teased. It was for after the battle. Lana gave him a small smile and handed her brother a flask of water. Wine will make you sluggish, so you must have water. This water was drawn up from the spring of rejuvenation. It will give you strength and courage. And I need those, Olven said and tipped the flask back, drinking deeply. It won't make me young again, will it? Olven asked as an afterthought. I'd rather not be an infant right now. Lana chuckled. Don't be foolish. She broke half a loaf of bread and gave it to him along with some cheese, figs, and radishes. Olven consumed his meal quickly, obviously enjoying it, while Lana picked at her food nervously. I believe you are more nervous than I am. The prince leaned forward, resting his chin on his hand. Which is strange when I think about it. Why am I not nervous? It is the water I gave you. Lana replied, letting her eyes scan the area for the giant. It takes away your nervousness. Perhaps you should take some, he suggested. Lana waved away his suggestion. When the horses were well rested, they pressed on toward the desert. A wide pass separated Arkenland and the desert sand. The moment they left the cover of trees, they could feel the heat of the sun glaring down on the sand. It was like walking into an oven. In the distance, Tashban glittered sharply. To Olven, the city looked so close, but he knew it was in fact farther than he thought. Even though this is a shortcut to Kallerman, I can tell why no one is willing to travel this way, he said, wiping the sweat from his brow. I cannot spot giant pyre. Lana craned her neck to see in all directions. Is it possible he has already made it to Tashban? Worry crept into her voice. No, I do not believe so. Olven said with more confidence than he felt. The thought had crossed his mind as well. He desperately clung to the prophecy of the centaur. I am sure Giant Pyre has not made it this far yet. But Gladstone said he was heading this way, and giants can travel on foot faster than we can on horses. Glamston also foresaw me slaying the giant, 
He may have spoken urgently to make sure I came here in time to stop him from crossing the desert. Well, that makes sense, Lana said somewhat reluctantly. What shall we do in the meantime? Olven glanced up at the sun, shielding his eyes from the bright light. It is already high noon, and the sand feels as hot as fire. If the giant does not come in an hour, we will go back to the river, though I would rather fight him here. Why? This location is more maneuverable than the river because the trees and hills will get in the way. He would be at as much of a disadvantage as you, Lana pointed out. Not really. He could squash me with a tree. You are right, brother. Lana couldn't help smiling. It would be far better if we stayed here. She felt proud of Olven. Already, she could see a difference in him. He walked taller, more confident. Of course, it might have something to do with the water she gave him. This is what he always needed. A glorious adventure away from his favorite tree and books. Lana watched as the prince searched in his saddlebag. He took out the dragon tooth and examined it before slipping it into his armor. He reached back in and brought out a book. Olven caught the look of disbelief on Lana's face and grinned, waiting for her outburst. You brought a book? By the lion's mane, Olven, do not tell me you plan on reading the giant poetry. No, sister. One of the rules of being a knight is to be prepared for anything. I have come prepared to wait for the giant. Lana stared at him and wordlessly shook her head. He leaned against Destiny and opened the book to the last place he had stopped. For the next half hour, Lana alternated between glaring at him and scanning the area for any signs of the giant. Sweat glistened on her forehead and arms. She was about to suggest they go back to the river and cool off when the ground started trembling. Olven straightened up and put his book away. The trembling became more violent and they could hear trees crashing in the distance. Olven pulled out his sword and moved Lana and the horses away to a safe vantage point. It's time, he said calmly, facing the pass toward Arkenland. <laughs>